first, so, um, real quick, what is a tight policy? <laughs> Great question. Yeah. Um, so, you know, first of all, uh, the word type is pretty overloaded in uh, in programming. Yeah, um, for sure. So what we're talking about here are specific, specifically the double underscore type name strings that every object type in your um, GraphQL schema will have. Yeah. So like the, the smallest valid GraphQL query is just, um, you know, double underscore type name inside of curly braces. And that'll give you the, the type name of the, the root query type. Yeah. Uh, almost certainly, you know, capital Q query. You can see that down at the very bottom. Um, that's such an important piece of information. I mean, maybe not the, the query type name, but the other ones, the country type name, yeah. that Apollo client um, will add the type name field to automatically to all of your, your selection sets so you don't have to keep typing it. Manually, um, yeah, that's great. It's pretty cool, yeah. yeah. But, um, you know, that. so that's the kind of type we're talking about. Um, but more generally, uh, a type policy is a little bit like a class, you know, right? Like when you, when you write a class in many different programming languages, not just TypeScript or JavaScript, um, you know, you are defining a policy yeah. about what should happen when, you know, you have something of that type and you like call a method or access a property. Um, and so this is going to feel a little bit different because it's, it's more declarative and there's no like obvious classes involved. Um, but it is, it is somewhat the same, uh, a type policy, um, lets you express things like, uh, you know, which fields, uh, of objects in this type are the primary keys. If it's something other than the, the default of ID. That's cool. Um, yeah. And then, um, for any fields that the, uh, the type may have that you could request from the, the server, you can override. Um, what happens when you read that field? You can transform the sort of outgoing value. Um, and you can also customize what happens when you uh, write new data to the field in case you know, you're know not happy for whatever reason with the, the default or representation that we see here. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we've got some examples of both of those planned for later. Um, but I think in this case, what were we gonna try to do? Oh yeah, we were gonna try to add a a new client side field that is the country name plus the yeah. the emoji, right? Yeah, I was gonna say we could call it like name with emoji just for the sake of this. Like nothing sure. nothing complicated. Yeah. And then one thing yeah. I did want to note is like this these countries are actually a great case for that um uh being ide able to identify the key fields and specify what the ID is because their ID is not called ID, it's called code. So that's actually like yep. a, a perfect example of that situation. Indeed. Okay.